cape Hey guys, how's it going? It's Matt from Fidelity Gaming TV, and welcome back to another episode of your Minnesota Twins Out of the Park Baseball 16 series here on OOTP 16. So, finally cooled down where I live so I can get through this commentary with ease, and uh, basically, we're just going to be reviewing the first half of the season, how it went. We're going to look at all the players' statistics, records, batting average, stuff like that. And we're going to look at the All-Star Game rosters, and then we're just going to go ahead and sim the whole second half of the season. I really don't feel like we need to make any trades or anything. We're just It's just kind of like a waiting game here in Minnesota. We don't really need to do anything special. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do that. And then at the end of the second half, um, once the season is over, I will show you guys, update you guys on whatever happens. And that will be it for the video. So this is the last video for the 2015 season, unless somehow we miraculously come back and win the division or get into the wild card spot even though we're 11 games back. We are 42 and 46, a little better than I thought. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings here as the Yankees own the AL East um, lead by a game over the Orioles. The Indians are leading the AL Central by three and a half over the Royals. The A's are leading the AL West eight and a half, or sorry, eight above the Astros. AL wild card is owned by the Royals and the Tigers. Astros a game and a half back. Nationals in the NL East are leading the Mets by two and a half games. The Cardinals own the NL Central lead by a game over the Cubs. The Rockies, out of all teams, are leading the NL West with a game and a half lead over the Dodgers. And the NL Wild Card goes to the Mets and the Dodgers with the Braves a half game back and the Cubs a game back. So that is that for the standings. Uh, Twins, like I said, 42 and 46, 11 games back, and four games back of the Wild Card. So we're actually closer to the Wild Card than we are the AL Central, which makes sense because. The Indians have one of the best records in baseball. So let's go ahead and look at the All-Star Game rosters here because they have been announced. And here it is. Your American League starters are the well, the okay, I guess all the pitchers are um, Wei Ying Chen from Baltimore, Sonny Gray from Oakland, Jesse Hahn from Oakland, Felix Hernandez from Seattle, and Chris Sale from the White Sox. Um, so I'm assuming that the top of each position are the starters. So it looks like Bayu Chen is going to start for the AL. And for the relief pitchers, it is Kevin Herrera, or sorry, Kelvin Herrera, and Fernando Rodney. Closers, Albuquerque, Allen, Doolittle, and Uhara. So, catchers, Hank Cogner won it from Houston. Yan Gomes is the backup for Cleveland. And Salvador Perez, Kansas City, is the last backup. First base goes to Jose Abreu. Joey Gallo actually made the backup spot. Jose Altuve starts, Brian Dozier backs up, Adrian Beltre starts, Brett Lowry is the backup, shortstop goes to Jose Reyes, there are no backups, although they might need one because he's injured, uh, Michael Brantley is also injured, he's starting in left field, Mike Trout though, I get the call because he is healthy, Lorenzo Cain in center, so is Adam Jones, Jose Bautista in right, so is Chris Parmalee. So, NL now. Doug Fister, he will start, I guess, possibly. I don't know. If this is in order, it's going to be Doug Fister against Wei Yu Chen, um, or Wei Yin Chen. And um, if it's not, then I would assume it would be like Fernandez and Kershaw or something like that. So, anyways, pitchers for the National League are Fister, Kershaw, Morrow, Syndergaard, and Tehran and Zimmerman. Relief pitcher is Manny Para. Closers are Craig Kimbrell, Mark Melikon. Trevor Rosenthal. Catchers are uh, Travis Deonard, Buster Posey, and Willen Rosario. First baseman, Freddie Freeman, Paul Goldschmidt, Anthony Rizzo. Second base, we have Chase Utley. Third base, Nolan Arenado. Shortstop, Troy Tulowitzki. Left field, we have Cargo, who is injured. Shocker. <laughs> um, left field, we also have Gregory Polanco's so whole prize start, or maybe Puig. Center field, we have Blackman and Harper and McCutcheon. And right field, we have Jason Hayward. So that is that for the All-Star game. Um, we can actually go ahead and see who wins it if you guys really want to know. Because if somehow, like I said, the Twins come back and win something, um, or like the division and go to the World Series, then we want to know who won it, so who gets the home field advantage. And National League wins it. Let's go ahead um, and check all our players. Let's see how they're doing. I want to kind of go faster. Um, I am probably going to call up Byron Buxton in this episode. I'll let you know when. I'll just be a little 
in between thing. But let's go ahead and take a look at our players. I don't want to go super in depth, but I do want to go ahead and um, just show you guys who's struggling, who's not. Um, averages here, everything seems to be normal. We still have these three guys doing very well. Joe Maurer at first, um, Kenneth Vargas, the yeah, we have him at DH hitting 302, and Brian Dozier hitting 298. That's good. Uh, no one seems to be really struggling at all. Uh, the lowest is Jordan Schaefer, the left fielder. He's leading off. But that is about it. No one's really struggling. That is good to see. Uh, home run leaders, we can sort that out. Brian Dozier's leading. RBI leaders, Brian Dozier, he's doing really well. Same with runs. Uh, walks goes to Maurer, then Dozier. But uh, yeah, he's doing very well. Leading in doubles, triples. Danny Santana, that makes sense. Shortstop, he's fast. Uh, as far as pitching goes, let's see. ERAs are going down a bit. That's good, especially Tommy Malone's. He's started off at like a six and a half ERA. Um, you know, some of these guys are pretty high. I think the one thing we need to focus on is our pitching. We drafted a bunch of pitchers in the draft, and we do have Jose Barrios coming up, but it's going to take a while. So we may have to upgrade that um, in the offseason. You see Kyle Gibson went two and five, but I'm not too worried about that um, for right now, at least. Um, ERAs in the bullpen are decent. Um, 503 is Stephen Pryor. It's okay. And that is that. So everyone's doing pretty decent, I have to say. We're actually not doing as bad as I thought. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sim the second half. And every once in a while, I'll check to see how um, Byron Buxton is doing. Maybe we'll call it Miguel Snow. But we're probably going to call it Byron Buxton. I'll let you know when we do so. And I'll be back with that. All right, guys. So we are at the beginning of August here, the end of July. And I think this is the perfect time to call up Byron Buxton. You see he has jumped to a four and a half star overall. That is crazy, guys. So he was about a two star overall, maybe a three star when we last checked. Obviously, when you call him up, they increase. But I was thinking maybe he would increase to like a four star. Well, he's already a four and a half star. And we haven't even called him up. He's currently hitting 288 right now, which is good. Um, 35 walks, 36 RBIs. Um, doubles are pretty high. And I think this is just the perfect time to call him up. It's perfect. Um, he is... Well, he would have about a half season of uh, playing time before the end. And, you know, I don't want to get too crazy with this. I don't want to get too in-depth. But basically, we're going to call him up right now, as you guys can see. And we are going to place on active roster. He's actually already on the 40-man uh, roster. Not sure why. But um, we'll place him on the active roster. And he's now officially... Never mind. Roster is full. I will be back one sec. Okay, so we're back. Sorry about that. A little embarrassing. We cleared up a roster spot. And now... We will officially call up Byron Buxton to the MLB. Welcome to the show. He still remains a four and a half star overall. I'm gonna set up the lineups real quick, and next time you guys see me, it will be the end of the season, or maybe we'll call up Miguel Sano. Still uh, waiting on him. I don't know. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. So it's either gonna be that or the end of the season. See you guys there. Okay, guys. So we're here at September 1st, beginning of September, obviously. And here's what I think about Miguel Sano. Currently in AAA, he is hitting uh, 293, which is really good. It was actually better than Buxton was hitting in AAA. Um, the only thing, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to call him up. I think he's expecting me to be playing in the majors. Trevor Plouffe, the starting third baseman, is doing pretty well. But the backup third baseman, Nunez, is not doing so well. And I think Miguel Sano could fill that role. Um, he doesn't necessarily need to be starting right now because I'm not going to throw him in that role, especially when Plouffe is doing so good. But he could definitely be called up and used as a bench player to back up and maybe start a few games at third base to give Plouffe a rest. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to call him up. It's September 1st, so you can do the September call-ups. Rosters are um, expanded. So we're going to go ahead here and call him up. So we call up Byron Buxton, who is a 4.5 star overall. He's only a 1 star overall, actually, you can see. But that may change if we bring him up or at least sim a day. So here's Miguel Sano being called up to the MLB Minnesota Twins. Welcome to the show, man. All right, guys. So we are here at the end of the regular season. Your Twins finished 75 and 87, which is about where I pictured them finishing. I'd say about 85, 90 uh, losses at the most. I'd say about 82, 80-ish at the least. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings here. Obviously, we didn't make the playoffs. Red Sox won the AL East by nine games. The Indians won the AL Central by 10 games. They had a very good record. The A's won the AL West by two games. 
The wild card game is going to be between the Angels and the Tigers. In the NL, we had the Nationals winning their division, the NL East, by two games. The Cardinals winning their division by six games. The Rockies winning their division by three games. And the wild card is between the Cubs and the Braves. So that is that. Um, as far as the prospects go that uh, you guys probably want to see the most, we will go over here to Byron Buxton, who is still a four and a half star overall. All his uh, potentials, his potential has been reached on the gap power, but look how much better he can get everywhere else. He's just a really good player. Hit 266 while starting 48 games. Um, that's pretty good. As far as Miguel Sano, he was a backup player. He didn't play the whole time. He's now a one and a half star. Um, hit 188, so it actually went down a little bit in the last couple of days. But uh, yeah, he's definitely got room to improve. Definitely not ready to start, I don't think. We could keep him on the bench, maybe promote him to a starter next year. But he's definitely ready to be in the majors, I think. So we'll look at him uh, later on. Also, we'll go to uh, we'll, we'll go to our prospects later. Uh, but the playoff matchups are going to be. Uh, I don't think it's been officially released yet. But we can definitely go to the standings and take a look here. Well, the best record in the MLB was the St. Louis Cardinals with 97 wins. The Indians were close at 96. The worst record in the majors was the Milwaukee Brewers. They had 97 losses. So, uh, you know, the Twins were there the last couple of years. So thank God they're not there anymore. I think now it's not so much like they're in a rebuilding mode. I mean, they still are, but they're not full out just tanking now. Now they're starting to slowly improve, kind of like what the Houston Astros are doing. They're still rebuilding. They're still not expecting con to contend for the playoffs, a division title, and eventually a World Series. Um, they're just expecting to improve, and that is exactly what this Twins team is doing. They have 87 losses, 75 wins. That's an improvement. That definitely is. And now we got to focus on adding those last few pieces, particularly um, pitching-wise, and focus maybe on making the playoffs We'll definitely try to make the playoffs next year, um, if not, definitely the year after. But we're definitely going to try hard next year. Uh, this year, we're just kind of calling people up, waiting for the pieces. Next year, um, I think we called everyone up that we need to. I don't think Jose Barrios will get called up next year. Maybe, maybe. But uh, this is definitely a good year for the Twins. It's a good, improving year. As far as the playoff matchups go, the Indians will be facing the winner of the Angels, Tigers, uh, wild card series and it'll be the Red Sox and the A's with the A's having home field advantage for the other ALDS series in the NL it is going to be the Cardinals the top record taking on the winner of the Cubs Brave series obviously Cardinals with the home field advantage and then it's going to be the Nationals and the Rockies both of those teams have the same record so whoever won the tiebreaker will have the home field advantage in the NLDS series. I will go ahead and show the playoffs and what happens in the next episode. Um, this this episode, we're just going to finish off with player stats, and um, that is that. Next episode is going to be what happened in the playoffs and the offseason. Okay, so here we are at the lineups for the Twins. We're going to see, look at all the averages and stuff. Uh, Joe Maurer finished strong, 302. So did Vargas. He hit 283. Brian Dozier actually did go down average-wise a little bit. He's only hitting 256. Uh, we know Sano uh, didn't do the best in his role with uh, the bench. You can see he was behind Trevor Plouf and Nunez. Um, but he had he was hit by a pitch once, had three walks, one run score, no RBIs, though. That's a little concerning. But you know what? That was only through four games. He, well, he started four games. He appeared in eight. So it's not that many. You can't expect much. Um, but in 16 at-bats, he got three hits. So um, aside from that... Jordan Schaefer struggled a little bit um, and left, but he was the backup to Oswaldo Arcia. Um, so, oh, well, actually, no. Arcia is playing right. Who's playing left? Jordan Schaefer is. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, he struggled a little bit. Um, 217, that's okay though. Uh, as far as catcher goes, I'm not sure. Uh, Pinto, you can see his he's three and a half star. We'll probably keep him. Kurt Suzuki is not happy. He expects to start. Um, he hit 257, but he was not starting, and he was not too happy with that. So I got a bunch of messages from him. I don't know. We might have to trade him. Uh, it depends what year he is in his contract. We'll either have to trade him or release him to free agency because he is definitely not happy with his role on this team. As far as pitching goes, uh, most of the ERAs ended up around the 5 range. Um, surprisingly, which I think is really funny, at the start of the season, everyone's was decent, and Malone's was at a 6-5-something. And his is really high. Now he has the best ERA out of all of them. 
He finished 14 and 12. Um, Nolasco finished 11 and 14. Gibson finished 7 and 10. Santana finished 9 and 11. And Hughes finished 9 and 14. So um, not too impressive, really anything. We're really going to have to improve on the pitching in the offseason. We'll see. Um, 6 3 0 ERA for Casey Fien. Um, but other than that, decent everywhere else. We do need more arms in the bullpen. I don't know why there aren't more arms, but we'll figure that out during the offseason. Okay, guys, so that's it for all of the updates. The season is over. Next episode, you guys will see what happened in the playoffs at the beginning and also the offseason. I think our main goal is to uh, look at our overall roster and put our players in who we think should start or should start in the future. Mainly, though, I think our main goal is to get some new pitchers, trade for some, pick up some in free agency. We'll see. But nevertheless, we are going to have some fun and get ready for the 2016 season. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe for more. And as always, peace.